I think it's a great time to look at your neighbor and say, we don't need more taxes. People need the Lord. Can you look at that? <laughs> we don't need more money. People need the Lord. We don't even need bigger houses. People need the Lord. And that's the power of what God has been speaking to us through this season, that modernity offers very temporary solutions. And so today, I invite you to eternity. Have a seat. People need the Lord. These past two weeks, I have come face to face with the consequences of modernity. I want to announce that these this past two weeks, I've been to prison. <laughs> Don't worry what I was arrested for. I've been to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to prison to visit someone. To visit someone. Yeah. <laughs> this week I've been to a homeless shelter. And thank God, finally our brother John got a place that takes care of him. Can we give God praise for that? Some of you have, have wanted us to give more information, but just for the sake of the privacy for the family. We have avoided showing pictures and stuff like that. But just pray for our brother John. This week, I have buried someone who was found dead at home. This past week. And I can confirm to you as your pastor serving in this place, this season that God has given as an opportunity to serve with you, that none of these people, be it in prison, be it in the homeless shelter, or even be it the one found departed at home, I don't think any of them wanted to be in the state that they were found. Yet when life happens, every choice that you and I make has a consequence. And as I was going through this, looking at these people that once had a house, they once had families, they had money, they had businesses. But you think of modernity versus eternity, the things that we rush for, the things we cry for, the things we desire more, more. Even some of us having the audacity of carrying money in bags and sacks and parading before hungry people. The elder John writes and says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. There are better things that last longer than the things that we hold so dear in our heart. And why? He says in 1 John 5, 13, that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of so when I started speaking about modernity and I wanted to compare it with eternity and especially from the lenses of the book of Ecclesiastes that talks about Hevel, 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 Hevel. And that is vanity, vanity, vanity. Five times vanity, vanity. I wanted us to come face to face with the reality that Mr. Kai, today I have it. Tomorrow, I don't. And today you may look at me and say, look at how poor they are. And tomorrow, you'll find me driving a limo. That's the funny thing about circumstances around us. But I felt it is important for us to come face to face with a contrast on where we lay our desires and hope versus what God has of us. So I said modernity Gen Z's, they want now immediate gratification. Sometimes without introspecting the consequences of the future. I looked at the building back home that was raised on the ground. I don't know whether the person who set the place on fire 
knew that that place has a father. That place has a mother. A man jumping from the third floor or fourth floor of a building to save his life from a fire, falling on the ground, and nobody could reach him just because somebody was pushed or provoked to light a space in fire and not think about the consequences. And today someone is sleeping somewhere without a father because of something that someone did. A father and a mother is burying a child because of pain. So somebody pulled a trigger. No matter the circumstances, but today a child is lifeless. Things that we do in the moment but has eternal consequences. A girl decided to make love to a gentleman. A gentleman making love to a girl, and maybe they were not ready for that sort of a relationship. And out of this have come a consequence, a pain. None of them was ready for the consequences that come with that. They were enjoying themselves for the moment, but they were not ready for the eternal consequences of what they were facing. Modernity asks for rational argument. Why? I want scientific proof. Choices are based on feelings and momentary pleasure. I want it now. I can see the advertisement. Oh, that pizza looks great. That, that burger man looks fatty and looks nice and, and, and fleshy. You almost feel like you're dripping. I know the way they bring them in color, full color. I want it now without sitting down to think of the eternal Consequences. Eternal consequences. So I felt like, why don't we contrast the face of modernity with eternity? <laughs> the doctrine of eternity as presented by Apostle John presents a view of existence that goes beyond what we call transcends the temporal. Because the biblical concept of eternity takes us beyond the now to the then. And I think once in a while, I used to say back to a congregation that I pastored, I used to tell them, I think it is important that every one of us visits a mock once a year as a lesson. Not when one of us or when one of our friends is gone. Just walk one day and say, today I want to go for a pastoral visit at the mock. And I tell you the reason why. I once did that during Olympics. And I could not believe the contrast between now and then. I was helping a family that had lost a child. And because they were so scared to enter the morgue, as some of you know how circumstances can be back home, I was given the mandate to go and identify the child. And as it is true that a ship knows, a, a shepherd knows his sheep. I knew the child. And amidst the bodies that were paraded there, I could distinctly pick out the child. But as we were preparing the child, I was representing the family. We are with the morgue attendant. There was, all, um, what do you call it? Football Olympics going on, on there. There was a screen just outside the morgue door. And believe me, there was, um, it was what? This team, in, it's called what? Um, Brazil. Brazil was playing somebody. And everybody was for Brazil in, in that environment. So, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. The guy who was with me inside, when he had Brazil, Brazil, he left me and he went outside. And People who were crying next to the screen, because just a door, the waiting area, they were crying and Brazilian at the same time. When Brazil, oh, that guy never scored. They remember they were crying. They start crying again. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. The guy left me three times. And I remember, finally when Brazil scored and people stayed there and I remained inside, 
I had a voice in the silence because with me were bodies and the only thing that we were sounding was the sound of the machines, the fridges, the refrigerators. Zzz. On the other side, just a meter away, was crying and laughter joined together. Those who were crying at the same time, they remember they were celebrating at the same time, they remember they were mourning. And this side, I'm left alone. It was still, it was quiet. And I asked, I had a voice behind me saying, what's the difference between this and them? This and those. As I'm glued there, I felt in my heart the answer was the breath of God. Those ones still have breath. And these ones, the difference between us and them was the breath. Some of those who are there don't even want to come in here. And of course, those who are in here cannot go out there. And those who are crying and yelling at the same time will one day cross the door and come on this side. Only if you're watching me at home, the difference between them and us is what? God's breath. And I felt to remind you some values of eternity. Eternity has a promise, eternal life. Your life is not a subject to the limitations and decay of earthly existence. I long for the day in Revelation 21.4. And I love this whenever I finish a funeral service. I love saying these words, not because it's a funeral service word, but the great hope that comes from these words. The Bible envisions a day God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. And that is the joy of eternity. There is hope. Even some of us who are going through pain today. A sister called me this morning and said, please pray for my mother. Even those of us who is going through, those of us who have just lost a child like my brother Richard who was with us here last Sunday. As I read those words around the graveside, for me, they are not just words to read so that we can finish the burial, but they are words of reminding us that there is a day coming through. But eternity promises hope. Amen? Promises hope. Eternity is also dependable. Number two. It's dependable. It gives permanence and stability. God is dependable. He was there from the beginning. We say that he's the omnipotent, all-powerful. He's the omniscient, all-knowing. He's the omnipresent everywhere. So the eternal realm is characterized by permanence, the unchanging ability in contrast to what we have now. Now we have it, tomorrow we don't have it. But those who trust in the Lord know that it is not here. David cries and David says, and people ask him, why is it that now you are dressing up and you are eating and you are anointing yourself? He says, when the child was dead, I cried to the Lord to have mercy on him. But now that he is dead, can I bring him back? No, but I will join him. Eternity is dependable. That the things we look for, the things we run after, the things that our politicians are parading before the people, living lavish lives and forgetting the needs of their own people. Those things are temporal. Today they have the offices, tomorrow they don't. The Bible says in Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You can depend on God who is lasting. Because the circumstances you're going through, even if it is pain, it is not lasting. The other day we met John on the streets with Brother Captain. He was, he was bad. Now we meet him in this shelter. He's smiling. 
He can sit down. He can walk. That time he had to be lifted up and to be put in an ambulance because circumstances are never permanent. When we depend upon the Lord, things are already better. Who has the final say? Jehovah. God is dependable. These things that we run after, Simon, they'll go. They'll go. No matter how beautiful your girl is, she'll go. Mm. The girl, if my focus is on the boy or the man, no matter how rich your husband or your wife is, one day these things will leave us. But there's a place that is dependable. God. Eternity also offers certainty. So I've said eternity, number two, dependable. I hope you're catching those words. Certainty. Eternity defines the ultimate purpose and meaning of life. You are part of a divine plan. And so you ask yourself, Nelson, that your work is not just to wake up and eat that wonderful meal that our sister has made for you. No. You ask yourself, as Nelson, what did God design me for? Where, what am I wired for? When I'm coming to the house of the Lord, what am I wired for? What can I do to make a difference? I often say, whenever you're seated down with the people, always ask yourself, there are two things you can do. You can either add value or take away value. So when you are leaving a conversation, what have you added value in the lives of people? Are you gossiping about someone? Why are you tearing them down apart? Or is there something that you're adding value? You know what? Ask yourself, what is the purpose for which God has created you? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For what? For good works which God prepared beforehand and we should walk in them. So before we go down at the grave where Ecclesiastes says there is no work. What work can you do when you still have the breath? God's breath that has been loaned to you for a season. Because that breath has been given to you for a season. <laughs> There's a friend of mine, we chat with him in uh, the Gotabka wall. Oh man, that guy talks all manner of stuff against God. So I've learned the secret. I in so we talk very serious stuff in the Indian. Pastor. And I share with him. You are living on borrowed. And these opportunities we have. As will account. For the opportunity. The gifts and the privileges that God gave us. Gave you. The time you had with your family. To nurture and bring up those children. Or am I too busy doing and making wealth until I forget that God has given me a responsibility of raising the young people? Hold our hands together and make an altar on our home table. Did we take advantage of that? A time when you could go out and have fun and marry together from Kenya and saying, Pastor, yes, I have an education. Yes, I'm doing this. Can you pray with me? I am tearing apart. Because nothing of it is making sense. We are making good money. A doctor, in fact. But she's telling me, Pastor, none, none of this makes sense to me. I need peace. I'm here to witness to you that what we hold on is temporary. But if you have a purpose, ask yourself, what is your certainty for? I've talked about eternity, dependability, certainty, and reality. The reality is that one day you will face the reality of judgment and a reward. And that's what John is trying to tell them. The concept of eternal judgment and reward places us as humans to remind us that we have a season and that we must account for. Life on earth is a preparation for you and me for eternal Destiny. This is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 
so that each of us may receive what is due as for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And I love the way um, Reverend Shadrach, when he was ministering to us here the other day, our pastor, put it. Oh, Reverend Shadrach said it so well. And remember him giving us a scene at the Olympics. So that each of us will receive what is due for the things done while in the body. Or bad. So I'm asking you, ask yourself. And what kind? Some of us who have been given responsibility, whether you are at work, is it worth a reward? Is it what is the significance of having the correct worldview of eternity? Because it's important that you, you close out with that. Now, the correct worldview of eternity to having an eternal perspective. And so every time when you wake up, you don't just think of, oh, I am driving from here to there. How am I adding value to those around me? Someone said, uh, reminded me back home in Kenya, when you're driving from Ni the city of Nairobi, going to the city of Nakuru or western part of the Kenya, you have to pass through the Rift Valley. They said these are two things you can do. You can drive crazy because you want to reach the destination. Or you can drive and reach uh, the Abadeas, or, or I mean, reach the mountain tops, or reach Longo and uh, uh, I mean, park by the roadside for five minutes, enjoy, take a picture, look at the scenery. And so you ask somebody, oh, you know, I drove from Nairobi uh, to Nakuru two, under two hours, under two hours. What did you see? Nothing. Nothing. All the beautiful. Nothing. The mountains, the Lord has given nothing. You have nothing to appreciate for it. Some of us live life as though we are on the express highway. And the only thing... One time from where? Uh, uh, it's called what? From Glasgow to Edinburgh in, in Scotland. I was shocked, my friend. Uh, it was a speed trip. You try to look outside to see what, what you... Uh, pew, pew, I can only see... Nothing. I never enjoyed the. I went a place where you drive for six hours. I mean, I mean, six hours. I'm told a whole day. The thing took about less than two hours. I was like, this is crazy. You can see nothing. I never enjoyed that that drive. Pew pew. Some of us are on the express highway, Baba Captain. You will fall dead. <laughs> if we are on that express highway, where we just go, you don't even enjoy. You don't break to to say hi. Uh, to, oh, can I drive around? Oh, how are you guys? I'm, I'm around. Can I pass by and say hi with you guys? Hey, let's, oh man, Madam Kimbo, can you look back and tell your neighbor, slow down. Slow down. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. Our life is on a high speed. Let's slow down. Let's look at the more, how can you make friendships? How can you make value? Look at the people that you're around. How can you add value to them? Change your perspective. The correct worldview of eternity lives for a purpose and meaning, and that's what we talked about. While Ecclesiastes highlights the seeming futility of modernity, eternity offers a contrast by framing human life within the context of eternal. Someone to gain the whole world, yet for fate the soul. And verse 37, or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Mm -mm. Validates human experience and hope. You know, the reality is that Ecclesiastes agrees with what we go through. Modernity seeks to prove addresses those longings by offering a vision of ultimate fulfillment, everlasting life. Now, when I visited my friend, we were looking at the difference. We were comparing with Captain how we found him on the street and how we found him at home. You can look back and say, you know what? No matter what men and women go through, there is a ray of hope even when the cloud is 
stand. You just need somebody to lift up your hand. That I'm going through this season this time. But you know what? Just lift me. Maybe just give me one step. I'll walk the rest of the way. Who have you neglected to just give them one shove and then they would walk the rest of the way? Just one shove of the way. Church, the words of Ecclesiastes at the closing are very sad. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 6, it sheds a light beyond where the limited scope of modernity stops. He says in Ecclesiastes 12 of 6, remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed. All the golden bowl is broken. All the pitcher shattered at the fountain. All the wheel broken at the wall. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. That is the reality of the temporary nature of life. That golden bowl will one day break. This golden bowl that we will one day break. What will you present? I love the poetic nature of that word. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So the question is, do you have the spirit? You have the spirit. Uh, yesterday, I participated in celebrating the baptism birthday of two candidates who invited me. They were baptized last week. So my wife and Monica <laughs> organized a birthday and they invited the pastor to come. For They organized a birthday for the two girls, Cheryl and Shekania. As I looked at this, something occurred to me very strange as I looked and saw the celebration and the joy and had the girls give testimony, receiving their new Bibles that um, I bought them as a gift. While many of us celebrate regularly our temporal birthdays privileged by human birth, very few of us experience the eternal birth that will outlive the grave into eternity. And I remember sharing with them this equation that I shared with you one time. 1B is equals to 2D. And 2B equals 1D. Hmm. What are you saying, Pastor? 1B equals 2Ds. If you're only born physically once, then you'll die twice. You'll die physically and you die eternity because you have no place in the house of God. But if you are born twice, 2B is equal to 1D, you may die or you will die physically, but you will live eternally. Again, he says, vanity, 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 says the preacher. Listen to the poem. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed. Or the golden bowl is broken. Or the pitcher shattered at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the wall. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. And he finishes verse 8. Vanity of vanity says the preacher vanity can you say with me hevel 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 can you say that hevel 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 let me welcome pastor milton
Uh, I don't usually tell you, but I'll tell you. As a father and as a husband, willing beginning tomorrow. Pray with us as we 13 hours to Indiana back to join you. Uh, Pastor Milton and the rest of the pastoral team will be taking charge. So I want Pastor Milton to come today and do you'll pray for these dear ones that we can come to a place where we engage God with eternity. Before we close our service, would you want God? Allow me to hand over to my pastor, Pastor Milton, as he takes us for a, a cup of, uh, of chai. All right. Uh, pastor Kate, please come. Get a microphone. Can we all stand with your All right, um, she's the point of contact, he said. That it doesn't need to be here. That's what he whispered to me. Well, um, we thank God for what God is doing to this dear family. And as they prepare to travel, we want to ask God's mercy to be with them, uh, to take them, and to bring them back. And we also pray that God will connect us with eternity. And I believe each one of us has uh, received salvation and therefore we are sailing. So we are in the right path. Let us not give up. Amen. Let us pray. Let's come over. Father, in the name of Jesus. You are full of grace and mercies. I hold my hand to Kate as a point of contact to the family. Father, they are on their journey soon to Indiana. How I pray that God, as they travel, let them enjoy the journey. As Pastor said, it will not be praise but they will see great things even the way as they head to that place I pray that God give them peace give them directions and decisions as they turn left and right father be their driver yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I pray Spirit of the Lord, lead them. As you have said in your word, that God, the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. I pray that you order their steps. Father, I pray for the resident, uh, the residence place they are going to stay. For those two weeks, I pray that there will be peace in those rooms and those houses. I pray that as Kate even prepares for studies, Father, you will give her peace in her mind. Father, I pray that those two weeks will be joy and peaceful for them. And as they prepare even to come back, I pray that give them even the mercies that are required for them. And now, God, we release them in peace and understanding mm. that God we shall miss them here but God prepare them there as they prepare for their wonderful life and Father this I pray fears of life God be with us It shall be well. 
unto you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name as we release ourselves even today for our tea and for the week. We pray that God may you post your peace upon our faces that everything that we do we shall be looked upon as blessed ones. Father, let the favors of the Lord be with us in this week. Every plans of each one of us, let it be established. And when we come back again, even on Sunday, we shall say, we saw your hand. We thank you. We bless you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you shout and say amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Welcome for China.